today with Justin Miller, CEO and co-founder of New Hera. Justin, thanks for your time. Thank you. New Hera is an advanced technology company. Are you able to share some of the history of New Hera and where you are now? Sure. Uh, we, we listed on the ASX uh, just over two years ago. Uh, and in that time, we've seen some, some dramatic increase in, in our profile. Um, and in, in reaching out to, uh, to what is a global market with, with pretty much an early stage product. In fact, when we listed it, it was a prototype. So we've come a fairly long way over the last two years from, from prototype to, to our products being available in global retail around the world. So we've had to, had to not only build a product, we've had to build a channel, and, uh, and now we're seeing the, mature, uh, the maturing of that channel and uh, maturing of our business with, uh, with uh, multiple products now in market. And people think of New Hero as a single product, and that's not the truth. No, it's not. I mean, it's uh, that product allowed us to get some exposure globally, and uh, but more importantly, what it's enabled us to do is to really create um, a, a hearing ecosystem. And, and hearing is the market that we're in, and, and smart hearing is how we categorise ourselves within that market today. Um, and that's very simply wedged between what is what we regard as premium headphones and and the hearing aid market, and providing products that fit within those, that provide some hearing assistance, but still do all the things that people want from a, from a headphone perspective, which music, phone calls and the like. So we've really um, morphed those two categories into what we've now deemed as, as smart hearing. And has there been legislative or retail changes that have aided that growth? Yeah, absolutely. So as much as it's about our product and our technology that we're bringing to market, the, uh, there's, there's legislation's changing at the, at the hearing at the hearing end, which is uh, making it easy for us to, to, to get into market. And, uh, and from a retail perspective, we're seeing um, our ability to, to, to provide a consultative sale, which is very important for our product and, and something that hasn't necessarily happened at the pure consumer electronics retail end. And uh, the, the, the ability for other types of retailers to get into the hearing space. And uh, an example of that is, is the optical chains. So we're working with optical chains globally um, that are seeing this natural progression from pure eyewear into also providing forms of hearing assistance. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a natural crossover there with people that are wearing these with, with people that uh, need some form of hearing assistance. And it's that mild to moderate end, that, 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 that very low end of, of hearing losses, which is, which is our target, and a very underserviced part of the market today. 75% of all hearing loss actually is mild to moderate, and uh, there's less than 10% penetration rates for assistance at that end of the market. So a huge opportunity, the representative for us, um, but it's very difficult to actually access that market. So these new types of retailers are providing us with an enormous opportunity um, to, uh, to, to service that market today. In terms of scaling and growing both the company and the product, how have you fared in what is a competitive global market, but a large market to enter into? Look, for, for us, and our initial product was to, to gain traction and, and to take on retail and, and, and open a number of retail doors. And, and in that, we've gone from sort of 40 retail doors to over 1,500 in the space of 12 months. Um, but opening the doors or creating the sell in as we call it doesn't necessarily translate to sell through and so our focus now is, is on those particular retailers that enable us to create the sell through. Uh, we can keep opening thousands and thousands of doors but it doesn't ultimately solve the problem of um, this, uh, this ability to create a sell through. Another product on another peg in another store is not where we want to be. Um, our product does take some um, consultation in, in selling, um, it's a high priced item. Um, and so we've had to find the retail that ultimately helps us with that. So it's, it's very important for us as we mature, um, our, business, our business and our products get a little bit more complex, um, that we've got a path to market that actually supports that. So looking at your last quarterly just released, what are some of the key takeaways that investors may not have seen or understood clearly from the quarterly? Yeah, good question. We, we ultimately released our second product to market in May. Um, we very quickly sold out of that product um, at, so at the back end of last quarter. Um, and a lot of those were advanced sales that were, that were ultimately paid for. Um, so when it came to this particular quarter, uh, we, we very quickly, in the early part of the quarter, were manufacturing more product having sold out. Uh, that product ultimately, uh, um, we got out to you know, a, a fairly core base of new retailers um, with, with this new particular product. And, uh, and having said that, the, the, 
the development that we've done hasn't, hasn't necessarily been traded to the school to school board in that particular quarter. The quarterlies are frustrating in, in some instances in the sense that they only actually record cash receipts. Um, so it's the cash that actually comes in the door. It doesn't allow you to, de and cash outflow, so it doesn't allow you to detail necessarily the, the projected forecast related to those cash outflows or necessarily the orders taken within that particular quarter as well. So they're, they're, they're very narrow in their, in their, in their context and, uh, and for us, that doesn't represent what's happening for, on, a, on a grander scale. So in isolation, it's a, it's a very limited document. And is it hard to um, educate shareholders and potential investors of that, that time lag from investing in product and the sale of the and the receipt of that product sale at a future point in time? Yeah, look, I mean, the, the ASX is a very public platform ultimately, and, and for us, it, it has its frustrations. You know, we, we've, we've, we've got to detail everything that we do, and as, as a business that's two years ago had a prototype and now is in this very public um, domain um, in terms of releasing of information, um, yeah, it, 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 it does provide some problems in, in communication because um, we've actually got to put it all out there. And some of our competitors are very, very large companies, so they, they actually enjoy that window and, and being able to look at what we're doing. Um, so, so in that regard, um, there, there is some frustration in, in, um, in what we have to put out to market. Um, but by the same token, it provides us with a platform to, to also reach that market. And looking forward, what should investors be focused on over the coming quarter from the company? Um, for us, we've rapidly grown from, from prototype to, you know, uh, in, in a global retail market. And we, have, we do have a leadership position within this new category of smart hearing. And, and, and for us, it's about consolidation of that. And, uh, and that'll come through, obviously, an increase in, in revenue numbers. Um, but for us, it's all about um, creating these stable retailers that we can actually consistently grow on and, uh, and not continue to just open doors and open new retailers. It's about providing the limited resources that we have um, from a marketing and sales perspective um, to develop and nurture those. And, uh, That'll, that'll evolve over the, over the coming quarters and uh, you know, we, we've got to be conscious about growing a, a complete business here, not taking the sugar hit of opening more retail doors but developing those retailers um, that will ultimately be here for the long term for us and that should be um, some comfort to, to shareholders looking in. A great company with a world class product and a clear direction on how it's going to grow its business with those retailers and its product mix. Justin, thanks for your time. Thank you, David.